Well, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. We are here, we have arrived at the end of a very long journey. This is the Semisov part 10 of 10. And tonight we'll be checking out the anti-Moscow, save the best for last. And uh, I recommend highly when you play these lines that you're gonna see tonight, that you're a computer and not a human. They're not very human friendly. These lines are crazy, they get ridiculous, and it's very hard to be a human and play these lines. And for some reason, tonight we're gonna to show it from White's point of view to highlight you know, my personal bias towards this line. Um, and we'll get right to it. Let's just really quick get back to the semi-slav. We're looking still at the bishop g5 lines. Uh, we had a look at the Botvinnik taking on c4. Tonight we're again going to look at h6. We looked at the positional lines that can occur when they take on f6 in our last video. But tonight we're going to look at perhaps one of the most normal moves you could play in this position, right? I don't want to give up the bishop pair, so I just maintain the pin. If you do nothing, you develop, then I'll just play e3, and life is great. Well, black here is going to do uh, something kind of risky. He's going to do a combination of taking and holding on to this pawn mixed in with g5 to make sure that he can win a pawn. For example, after they take e4, getting ready to go e5. So g5, so they don't get to do the pin. And black holds on to the pawn. So it's very risky to play this way as black. It is true that you're up a pawn, but you've pushed pawns on all sides of the board. You only have one pawn left to push. I guess you got two, but there's, there's not a, you've done like a whole lot of, of damage. White is way ahead in development, and it's their turn. So we're going to see what white can do. Can white get an initiative? How can you prove that you have something worth a pawn here? And uh, we're only going to be looking at the main line today, which is bishop to e2, because Ben Simon, for some reason, doesn't want a 10-part series on the anti-Moscow. I don't know why, um, but that's, you know, that's his call, executive producer that he is. Uh, we're just getting ready for it. This is actually a highly theoretical line, so we really could do a whole bunch of parts on this, but we're going to limit it to just one today. So we're going to look at the main line, develop your stuff, bishop e2, and you're going to castle. And white has a whole lot of plans that might come up in all of these positions. If white can ever successfully play the move d5, like yeah, usually is crushing, you're opening up the center because white's way ahead in development. So a lot of these lines, white is looking to play d5. He also has the other breaks available, a4, b3. A lot of the times he can play h4. He has a whole lot of ways that he can change the pawn structure and try to open up the position. Uh, pretty early on. Also, e5 will be played a lot of the times, followed by another knight coming in and looking at some of these squares. So white has a whole bunch of plans, and it's black's job to kind of hold on here. Now, you have to already be really careful here with black. You can already go really wrong, and uh, basically, there's only one move here. Basically, you can play the other stuff, but... Um, it's not so obvious to see. The main move in this position is bishop to b7, a prophylactic move. You're trying to prevent the, uh, the d5 idea from white. White's going to push d5 and open it all up. If, for example, you play the most natural move, just develop your knight, knight b to d7, now d5 comes. And this is supposed to just be really good for white. For example, in the highest rated black game in which this was played, um, Zhu Chen versus Alexei Dreyev from 1999. And there's a whole bunch of moves. I mean, you can, you can take either way or you can play bishop to b7. This is the main move, and that was Dreyev's move. So we'll just take a quick look at how fast things can actually start to go wrong for black. OK, so we get to take. And in a lot of these lines, we're hoping at some point to push here, get this knight out of the way, and this check can be really disruptive. So here we see we go after this pawn. So when black defends it, we push our e-pawn. So when the knight moves, we can at some moment, we don't have to do it immediately, toss this check in and kind of disrupt the black king. 
Um, in this game, white just castled, which is fine. Black doesn't have a good way of really preventing bishop to h5. So after here, bishop h5. And you get a position like this. And black still has his pawn, but it's going to get kind of dangerous for his king. Um, for example, we have some targets. We'll just show a couple more moves here. Um, and in this position, if you put this on your engine, then it'll be like, white's just totally crushing. Uh, black has no chance. And that being said, black went on to win. So, um, but yeah, this is supposed to just be really good for white. You're, all of your pieces are so active. And all right, black, black has some issues. But in the game, there was lots of swindling, and white made a lot of mistakes. So, so black was able to win this game. But we won't talk about it. So going back to the bishop e2 line. Um, so knight b to d7, a mistake. Also an interesting mistake is b4 with the idea of removing the defender of e4. And I do want to show this game only because there's one move I want to show you. Uh, so let's just look at the idea. So we move our knight, and they take our e pawn. What's so bad about this? And yeah, it looks great. I'm about to take your bishop. That's going to be great. Well, we're going to move our bishop. Bishop to e5 attacks the rook. So after your knight drops back, we can bring our pieces in. And it's, again, like most of these lines, it's all about having the more active pieces. That's going to matter a lot more than the material. And we're going to sort of see some dramatic examples of that tonight. All right, I'm on your c pawn. So try to get rid of it. Just castle, g4. And now, the only reason to show you this game is this next move. Um, I'll give you guys a chance. I attacked your knight. Uh, let's see. Let's just. It's also interesting, these positions, to try to put you into these positions and get the audience involved. What would you guys do here with white? Attack your knight. OK, you want to play rook b1? OK, this is a very interesting move. So I will, I will take it, and I'll just see what you've had in mind. Which way did? I will take the bishop. With the bishop, OK, yeah. even though your bishop's hanging. No, I mean, at first, because I guess I might take the bishop first. Oh, you're taking this way first. OK, so a very interesting idea. So, so far, you have sacrificed a piece. And I guess I should be careful here. How am I going to defend all my stuff? Um, OK, I'm going to, I don't really, I can't really move my knight because then you're taking my c pawn. So I guess I'll have to block. Um, and you'll get all these crazy stuff where even though you're down a piece, like who knows, you might have compensation here. And that's how like all these lines work. But uh, I don't know, perhaps I've defended a little bit. I don't know if this was the most accurate way. But thinking of sacrificing the knight is correct in, in a lot of these positions. But that's not. OK, and one of the moves you can play here is knight to e1. Well, that's too obvious. I attacked your knight and you moved away. That's way too obvious. And here I can take here and trade lots of stuff. Let's just keep trading. Um, and this guy is attacked, so we can defend it. And something like this is about equal. So you could do that. Or you could play a super awesome, fantastic, amazing move. And this is why I say it's better to be a computer. So tonight we're going to kind of pander to our computer audience. The uprising is coming. So as soon as the computers take over, they'll you know, try to get all their viewership and to just so many is explained. Because there's so many moves that like, don't make any sense. And what often happens, I mean, especially at the high level, but even amateur level when people are preparing against somebody that might play this way as either color, as soon as somebody has some new idea or move that you don't know, and they've looked at it with their computer, you might be in a lot of trouble because you can lose like on the spot like at any single point. So things get very dangerous very quickly, and like computer-only moves need to be found in every position. And one of those moves that might not jump out at you is just the move queen to b3. So the same sort of idea. But now if you take here, and I take back, and you play the same way. 
I have knight b7. I think, unless anyone's cheating with the computer, then they could tell me I'm wrong. Um, that looks pretty good for me. So it is a little bit different with the, the queen there. And so what should happen is they shouldn't take your knight. They should, like, they should take the other knight. And then you can take, if there's a game where like, yeah, just don't take, also good, pin stuff. And finally, this position occurred, and none of these moves need to make any sense, but uh, position's about equal somehow. So there's going to be all sorts of moves like this in every position. That, that's why it would take a 10-part series to actually go over every possible continuation in a lot of these lines. But just to give you some idea, in this position, the main move, um, not knight b to d7, not b4, but uh, bishop to b7. OK, and we're getting closer to the main line. Castles, knight b to d7. And uh, OK, black is going to probably play bishop g7 and castle if you do nothing. We do have to take some action now pretty soon. Here is white. We got all our stuff out, and we castled. Black still has is a couple turns away from castling, and black can consider maybe going to either side. But uh, now white brings the action to black. And we're just going to look at the main move, which develop your stuff. Now I'm ready to castle. Everything's great. And we're actually going to look at two moves in this position. The main move is to take on d7. And we're going to come back and look at a, a Topolov game where he came up with the novelty knight takes f7, particularly good in bug house. Then black's in a lot of trouble. Um, but let's just first have a look at the main line. So here we go. Take. And also, this line is going to be crazy. And what's funny is, you know, it's only a couple hundred times in the database. But like every move here is forced because you only got here if you used a computer and you play a bunch of computer moves and then eventually somebody doesn't know what's going on and then you know everybody blunders and a lot of these games even at like the top level it's just everybody blunders every single move because it's impossible it doesn't matter how good you are world champion doesn't matter you just everybody blunders every move because you know at some point these positions break down and stop making any sense but only move here bishop to d6 Preventing you from castling. All right, just a6, a4, e5. You get the e5 break in. Okay, and this bishop, this is actually really common. This bishop will go to one of these two squares. Um, you need to do something active. He's not the best here. He's just looking at a wall. So bishop to g4 is a common idea. OK. And now the move, there's only one move here. So again, I'll test the class. And we'll see you know, if there's any computers in the audience, because no human could ever play this if they've never seen it, except for Danny Machuca played it. But we won't talk about that. So one reason you'd want to play this is, as black is you know this position, it's the main line, and then your opponent doesn't know stuff. So they just lose right away. So both sides have chances to lose right away. And that's kind of why you play the semi-slav in general. It's, you know, it is really confusing. It's a great way to try to win because it gets so complicated. It's the most complicated opening in all of chess, which is why it took us 10 parts. Um, but yeah, you have to, uh, you know, nerves of steel here. Does anyone have any ideas? E5. E5. OK, the master in the audience was able to get it right. Um, yeah, e5. And if you take, uh, look, all right, I got the e5 break and the c5 break in. If you take, white actually has a winning move. So if you played e5, you probably saw this move, maybe. Blunder your knight. <laughs> Just give me your knight. Right, so it's it's tough. <laughs> it's it's obviously easy to give all your pieces away in this kind of position. What about e6? All right, very good. And this is actually the winning move for white. Um, and then some computer defense to only be kind of a little bit worse. 
Uh, it's, who knows? But what is funny is this has to be losing. I'm up a night. I got that going for me. But you're checkmating me? All right, I'll play some random move. Knight to e5. You're checkmating me? Yeah, why not? Why not? Bring it on. <laughs> um, and that's, you know. Pawn takes pawn check. Pawn takes pawn check. OK, brilliant stuff. That might solve some of my issues. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, even though you're probably winning, who knows what the computer said, but rookie one first, don't, that attacks my thing and puts pressure on the e-file. I don't want you to do that. Um, why do you have to go, go do that? OK. You don't care? I don't care. You don't care, I don't care. <laughs> um, with confusion. That's how you play this, maximal confusion. And then the better calculator wins. So it's also good if you're a lower rated opponent, too, and you're trying to beat a higher rated opponent, because it's who know, nobody knows what's going on ever. It's impossible. Queen d4, what a move. Yeah, knight f3. Pawn e7 looks like a decent move. All right, so I'll move my queen. But oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you can take on c2, obviously. But then I'm taking on g4 with confusion. <laughs> all right, we're still playing on here. No, um, all right, we'll, we'll come off this line. But that's that's the point. Even if. And that happens too. Like you'll even realize, okay, I'm losing or something. There's always time to come back because <laughs> there's <laughs> massive counterplay all the time, and every piece gets sacrificed. And so you know, that's also cool if you're, you know, you're losing. You always have chances to come back. Some openings, you're just you're down a piece. Like you're just down a piece. There's no counterplay. There's nothing here. Anything can always happen, especially you know. Lower rated opponents, lots of mistakes can be made because it's too hard and too confusing and you have to find computer only moves. Um, but instead, in this position, you can play the move c5. Just get the c5 in there. Rook e1. Knight takes. So black now sacks a piece just so he can castle. But your knight is still attacked. All right, very confusing. 92. Uh, yeah, here I go. Just push, push my pawn. And then most humans, they give the knight right back. If you're the computer, yeah, you play like b3, but no human has ever done that ever. And then why? Because of the great black response. King h8. Notice I'm, I'm threatening to take here. And then put my queen here to go here and win that pawn. So yeah, king h8. That's why they don't do it. The most normal position you could ever have. This is the main line. Standard it is. This is the main, main line. So very standard, you know. And then zero, zero, zero. Yeah, there's like hundreds of games from this position. Yeah, this is the main, main line. Big draw. But you know, good luck actually drawing this against anybody decent, because <laughs> still too confusing. But that is the main line. Um, so we return to this position after bishop to g7. And we're going to look now at the game to Pawlov Kramnik from, I think it says 2008. That sounds right. It was played in uh, Vicon Zay. And OK. This move just got unleashed, first time ever. Just take on f7, knight's a meaningless piece, just get that king out there and attack. Um, so very, very aggressive stuff. All right, so it was taken. And as we sort of saw before, one of the ideas is kick this guy away so that we can disrupt the king, e5. Um, bishop h5. Probably an OK move. But instead, he went here first with a threat. King just moved over. 
And the knight still jumps in. I'm on your bishop. That's a normal move. You're like shocked at that move? I feel like I don't care. You don't care? Okay, he protected it. So far, so far, so good. H4 is audience suggested. But now I'll do whatever move is good for me. Uh, since you did nothing, just C5. Typical break. And make sure when you're playing this, you go like this a lot. That's like essential. Right, slam pieces, especially if you like you know it's dubious. Just slam it, then they'll get scared. Also important. Um, I don't know, H4 isn't really to the point. I don't know what that actually did for you. Did you have some big point? You're gonna open. Wanted to, you wanted to open the H file. You're hoping I take it. Why would I? What? When you were about to like open the H file for me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, not not really to the point. So after Queen to B6. Um, so if bishop to h5 isn't really check, we'll go to g4, another active square. Now the king is kind of tied down to this pawn. Maybe when you're not expecting, I'll sack on e6, drag your king out, especially in bug house. This is, this is very friendly to white in bug house. So, so take note of that. Don't, don't play this way in bug house. Um, you should? If you're white. If you're white, yeah. Yeah, let your opponents play this way. Um, so, so far, I, I assume white was still in his prep here. He, and he came up with the move queen to c2. And now it's uh, Kramnik to move and blunder. Um, but what's funny is, uh, this, this has been played. I'm gonna show, uh, I'll show you briefly another game. The next day after this, in the other section of Icon Z, um, in the, the lower section, there's two 2500s. And we'll take a look at that. It was uh, Timon and Lagojevich. And uh, so Black, they both seen this game, and I guess Black played the best move here. He went home and studied it, and then they played it the next day. So that's how fast theory can change in these lines. And also, I, when I was considering, like, I'm going to show the most highly theoretical, the most modern stuff from this opening. Well, it's like it changes all the time. Any time any top level player plays this, there's some new idea. So there's still so much to like learn about this kind of position. So. I'll get to see if you guys can play the right move here. So obviously Kramnik had you know never seen this, so it's impossible. But uh, I guess what would you guys guys play here? Do you notice that D pawn's hanging? Do you notice it? You want to take it? Okay, good. Don't take it because <laughs> yeah, Kramnik took it. Don't don't take it. Um, and yeah, that's. That's when things start to go wrong. Uh, in general, white wants to open everything up because your king's on e7, and I got all these open bishops and all these pieces attacking you. So it's always going to be in white's interest to open things up. So in the other game that was played the very next day, we'll come back and look at queen takes d4. OK, rook h to g8 was played, understanding you know, that white is coming in. And now, almost every single move in this game, we won't, we won't talk about too much, is a blunder. Like every move is a blunder from here on out. Too tough. This is Timon Lebojevic from Paikanse, 2008, the next day. Um, A4, and now black should take on D4, the pawn's hanging. But he saw the other game where it was like never right to open the position, so instead he went here. And then, like, I think the computer was like, your pawn's hanging, defend your pawn. But he didn't. He's not afraid to open it up. Uh, but black never does that. And then black goes on to win. And then somewhere, and then this move was, like, horrible. You blundered a pawn. Like, horrible. <laughs> Just take it. And now black's winning. How could you blunder a pawn? And he's trying to open the position, which is, you know, what you want to do here as white. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to try to keep it as closed as possible. White wants to open it up. OK, you get your queen in there. And then like every, every move here was wrong, so we're not going to talk about any of it. But because it's impossible to play this position. So uh, all right, so now bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah, all right. I'll, we won't talk about it because it's, it's too hard and everything was a mistake. No one can play these positions. Um, 
OK, so going back, though, to our main game. OK, so he took there. And now I'll, I'll put you guys into white shoes here. You guys get to play the winning side. Um, OK, good. So they kind of opened up the position a little bit. But what move did white have in mind here? Yeah. Queen g6. Yeah, just come right on in. OK, you're on the bishop. And now somehow he didn't find the super computer move, the easiest move anybody's ever played. Bishop to f6 was not played. The easiest move to ever play. No, and then the computer like takes this, and then you take here, followed by like complicated, crazy nonsense. Uh, and then too complicated. I think oh, it's here. <laughs> yeah, like so. It's yeah, the easiest thing to ever play in your life. And yeah, blacks, you know, probably. And I think I think we finished here. And all right, it's bad for black, but practical chances to survive. All right. But OK, he didn't find bishop to f6, because that's hard to calculate or consider. I know you would have, but you know, you're, the, you're the fresh prince. Um, OK, so instead, black took here. So trading bishops. One problem is the knight's hanging. And then open it up. And what's funny, too, is that after this, unlike the other game that was played in the other section of the tournament, like from this point on, they play great. Like so now they, you know, so it was really just one miscalculation, and then that just lost the game. Because um, now they both play great. Black defends well and white plays well, and so white wins. Because that's what. All right, just let's open it up. Let's attack it. So black does his best to keep it closed. Push, just keep it closed. Do not attack me. C4. Chase this queen. Check. OK, move my queen. And white here, you know, looks like maybe, oh, we're just going to repeat or whatever. Um, white sacks a queen. Uh, you know, perfectly natural in a crazy line like this. But it wasn't entirely necessary. I mean, you could consider playing h3 to drive that queen away or just to trade queens. but. OK, interesting. Opening it wide up. Yes, you get him. Now I take check. And OK, things are looking pretty bleak. Now it's just starting to become more obvious as the position simplifies that black is sort of in control here. All right, a little back and forth. Um, and from here, for you know these guys, it's just a it's a simple technical task, but you know still very complicated. If two class players are playing in this, then you know any result is possible. But okay, white just played well from here on out. It's pretty scary. And finally, this guy gets rolling. Just all these moves were like great. Um, and here resigns. Instead of the best move, rook takes g2. Yeah, that's a bad, it's bad if that's your best move. Um, okay, so really, this was a, a fantastic prep by Topolov. And that will conclude it for us. That was uh, the anti Moscow. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go play the tournament now. So, we're going to see how well you guys can play out these positions. That's going to be the most fun. And uh, OK, maybe we're going to, I think a lot of people have had some good suggestions for what they want to see next. So maybe I'm going to get some of your comments down below, whatever you guys want to see. I'll pick one of your guys' uh, openings you want to see explained here coming up for the next episode. And thank you, everybody, for joining us on this very long journey. Thanks for your patience, staying with it. Um, thanks for all the positive feedback. Hit like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week.